Oh, this is my cat. I want to tell you about Life of Fred cats. <laughs> Little, I'm trying to climb me like a parrot. I want to talk to you today about Life of Fred, which is a math series for elementary students on up through college students, actually. Um, so we're on the elementary series. Life of Fred starts with apples and then butterflies and then cats and then dogs. And can you see where this is going? It then moves into pre-algebra, trigonometry, geometry, algebra, pre-calculus, calculus. It goes all the way through two years of college calculus. And it is a really good curriculum, math curriculum, for homeschooling or for extra work for kids who want it or need it. So I'm just going to tell you a bit about what I really love about Life of Fred and some of the pros and cons of it and what I think about it. So we are homeschooling three kids and right now I'm using Life of Fred with my eight-year-old, who's my oldest. So we started with apples and we are now on cats and I'm really enjoying this. It's really fun. Uh, just as a caveat, my eight year old is super into math, just kind of naturally gifted at it. So I can't speak from the perspective of a parent of a child who's struggling with math, but I think this would be really good for that too, because it is very intentional about making math real life, making it apply to real life. And that to me is so important. You know, to me, math isn't a series of worksheets that you do and you just memorize some facts and you know, it's divorced from the context. Um, life of Fred tells you what the context is and gives you examples. And I really, really appreciate that about it. So I'm just going to tell you a bit about what i like about it. And I'm going to use this as my, uh, outline. It says, why choose Fred? The first star is fun. Readers have called these books off the wall, totally undignified, wacky, and brilliant. CC Quebec electric heaters. We never close. Fred was so happy that a store was open at this time in the morning. The clerk in the store didn't seem to be as happy. Hey kids, she said, what do you want? Brilliant. So it is a funny story. Fred is a five-year-old who became a math professor, I think at nine months old. He teaches at Kittens University in Kansas, and I mean, it's just goofy. I don't know. He lives with his doll, Kingy, in his office, and he never eats. That's a running joke, which cracks me up because it's like my kids. And um, it's, just, it's, kind of a, it's just kind of a funny, lighthearted, goofy story. And his, his adventures, you know, that bring him into math problems are really kind of fun but also not like they're not totally out there there's kind of like okay he sees some caterpillars and here's what happens with caterpillars and you're counting them and you know it's just like all these real life ways that you can use math uh comprehensive more math and life of fred than in any other homeschooling curriculum that we know of well i have reviewed no other math curricula so i couldn't say for sure um but i will say that life of fred in the first book the apples starts in with some learning about algebra and calculus. Five plus four equals nine. You got it right this time. Five vending machines plus four vending machines equals nine vending machines. In algebra, we will do problems like this. Five V plus four V equals nine V. Okay. And I think apples is aimed at like first grade. So I definitely think it has a lot of math and it goes all the way through calculus. I've heard people say, oh, I wouldn't just use Life of Fred, I would definitely supplement it with worksheets and things. And I don't know, maybe you need to, but um, I think you could do just Life of Fred and feel confident about that. Of course, it depends on your state's homeschooling laws and you know what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, motivating, not just drill and kill. Fred has a need for it in his life, then we teach it. No more, when am I ever going to use this stuff? And I agree. It's not just like, okay, memorize the quadratic equation because why. It's, um, you know, Fred needs to find change 
to pay for a drink. Okay, so we need to count out some nickels. So we're learning to count by fives because of a reason. It's not just, okay, we're gonna do fives. We're counting by fives. Why? I don't know. We're just doing it. You just have to learn it. He ran back to the math building. He couldn't climb the stairs two at a time like some older people do. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. But he dreamed if he ever got really tall, he would climb them three at a time. He had never seen anyone do that. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. Uh, so I really appreciate that because that is math. That is how we use math. Uh, I have, you know, an unschooling bent to this, but uh, to me, that's just common sense. Of course you want math to be linked to how you're going to use it. Am I not petting you enough? Okay. Um, durable, not to be written in, Smithsone bindings, gloss film laminated covers, one copy for kids and grandkids. Okay, so we checked this out of the library and it, the one problem is we had to wait a long time to get these. Uh, so when I get them, I have to remember to use them because I'm not going to be able to renew them. But anyway, it is nice if you do want to buy them. They're $16. I have not found them cheaper than that. Like I've looked at used copies and things and seriously, like pretty much that's the price. Um, and, but the nice thing is you could use it, like it's you say one copy for all your kids and you could pass them on. And apparently they keep their value so you could sell them used and still get some money back. And so, yeah, you're not writing in it. You, they have uh, questions at the end of each chapter and you just write them on a piece of paper. So it's easy to do. Okay. Clearly written and cheap. Oh yeah. I already mentioned the cheap part, I guess, you know, $16 for a textbook. It's not too bad. Uh, like I said, we didn't pay that. I just got it from the library and okay. So. I just want to show you, they're really kind of goofy looking, uh, kind of uninspiring. If you are a graphic design, artistic type of person, you will look at this and go, really? Because <laughs> he draws Stanley F. Schmidt, PhD, stop it, eating a library book, is um, the, the author and illustrator. And you can see he illustrates like so. Okay, so those are his illustrations. This is legit what Fred looks like in all of the books. He's got a squarish head and yeah, that's what they look like. And then he intersperses it with clip art, which is kind of to me like looking at a church bulletin or something, little clip art things. Okay, so that is what it is. It is not a pretty book, but it is engaging. You know, he's got the clip art, he's got the drawings throughout the book. So there's always something on each page to, to bring your eye in. And you know, I don't know that books need to have all the bells and whistles of full color printing and uh, glossy pages and everything. You know, I think kids can really make do with this kind of level of design. <laughs> so even though it's not pretty, it's fine. I mean, kids don't care. Okay. I've got cat hair on my face now. <laughs> I'm covered in cat hair. All right. Got the contents and all that. Okay. So the chapters are pretty short. They're in this elementary series, which is all I've previewed for now. So let's say one, two, three, four, and a little bit pages. What's nice about the short little chapters is you feel like you've done something, but it's not interminable. You know, you, you got it down. So we often do two chapters a night because it, it feels, you know, really doable. And then this is your turn to play. This is the questions and the questions are short too. They, they don't usually go past the page. Okay. Now it's your turn to play in the hallway. This is a hard one. I don't think I'm going to do this one. In the hallway, there are five vending machines on one side and four on the other. How many vending machines are in the hallway? No cheating and counting on your toes. Yes, nine. That is correct, sir. Thanks for pointing to the nine. And then the answers are on the flip side. And they're always lined up like this so that the questions are here and the answers are once you've turned the page. So it really does, you know, encourage your kids to give it a try to answer these questions before you check the answers. But it's like the answers are right there. So you don't, as a teacher, need a separate book or need to come up with the answers. Okay, don't tell, but we never take out a piece of paper and write our answers down before checking. I don't think it matters. Maybe it matters. I don't know. Whatever. One of the things I do is time. Another thing is counting. Another thing is degrees. Uh, he talks about astronomy and here's subtraction. Here's talking about how subtraction uh, is not commutative. 
so he, he introduces vocabulary words. I, I like that the author, Stanley Schmidt, doesn't limit himself to, we're telling a math story, so it's just going to be about math. He does try to bring in all these other disciplines, which to me is really appropriate because that's how we learn. We don't learn in a vacuum. He talked about astronomy, human relations, physiology, music, geography, English, oil painting, how Magellan named the Pacific Ocean, and four-dimensional cubes. It's just an example that it's not just math, and it could trigger so many different things that your kids might be interested in. Like if they're reading about Magellan, maybe now they want to study more about Magellan, and that you know could lead you into a, a whole different uh exploration of learning oh here it is the letter squiggly line is my favorite letter in the greek alphabet it is pronounced xi which rhymes with i there are only 24 letters in the greek alphabet there are 26 letters in our alphabet we have two more letters than they do 26 minus 24 equals two again like probably the most vacuumy way you could learn math would be like a list of worksheets or maybe even like flashcards or something. But this is not that. This is really, you know, sets it within all the other disciplines. Can you hear my cat purring? <laughs> She's just lying on the table and purring here. My eight-year-old is not a great reader yet, so I read these to him. But they're written easily enough that if you have an early reader, they should be able to, to handle it which is nice. So you could do either way. I enjoy reading them along with him. And I would actually, I liked math, but I didn't know that it wasn't really my thing when I was a kid. And I got up to calculus in high school, but I didn't really understand calculus. I did fine up through then. And then I kind of got confused with calculus. And so I would really like to just do this whole series all the way up through calculus and see if I can understand it now. I'm kind of excited about that. So I'm enjoying doing this along with my kid, but it could be something that your kids do on their own. So I have cat hair all over, I'm so itchy, okay. So when I was trying to decide whether to start with apples or not, I read about it and I will just give you my recommendation here based on what I read in my own experience. I would say start with apples, even if it's too easy for your kids. Um, and like I said, I think apples is probably appropriate for ages five to seven like you know depending on how strong your kid is in math skills and like I said mine is now eight and I thought oh I think Apple's gonna be too easy and it was easy in that he definitely knows all the things added to seven already but um, the fact that it brought in like algebra right away and things like that I don't see that there's any point in skipping that because he's laying it out the author is laying it out over the series and so there's a continuing building of skills. And so if your kid's strong in math, I think it's actually totally fine that they start out with some books that make them feel like, hey, I've got this. And if your kid's not strong in math, that's another reason to start with something that's a little on the easy side. Uh, so, you know, I'm interested to see as things get harder, how it will work. All right, I'll just talk a little bit about some of the things I'm not as fond of about Life of Fred or that could be problematic for some families. So one thing that I pointed out already is it's not that pretty. <laughs> so if that offends you or your kids, that might be something, you know, I don't know if that's a deal breaker for anyone. Like I said, I, I choose to think of it as kind of charming. I think my husband's a little more turned off by it because he's more graphic design oriented and it's like, Oh my gosh, why would you design it like this? Um, another thing is uh, Stanley can get a little bit, I'm going to call him Stanley because we're friends. Just joking. Okay. Um, can get a little bit preachy about certain things like uh, eating nutritious food or uh, what were some of the other things he's been harping about? Oh, like he's talking about like people who are full of themselves. Oh, I remember there was one in Butterflies where he went on and on about people who watch too much TV. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, obviously he has strong opinions about things and he's putting them into this, uh, into the series. Another thing is that you can tell Stanley Schmidt is uh, a Christian and he'll put in Bible verses and occasional references to like heaven or God or different things. Um, for instance, they're all dedicated uh, to the glory of God. And it's not, 
overt overt but uh, you know if you're a family that has a different belief system or are trying to raise your children in a secular way you'll have to decide whether that's problematic for you usually it's in a way that you could maybe skip it or change the wording um, but sometimes you know as you're reading along maybe it's hard to do that and if your kids are reading it by themselves then it might be but this is probably just a problem for my kids but um he does a lot of spelling things like he's been doing the days of the week over and over and asking which days of the week have the most letters in them and that's something that my kid is just he can't think about that in his head yet because he's still learning to read and you know other kids who are stronger in reading I guess won't have a problem with that but I just wanted to point that out like there might be some things you have to adapt or skip or cheat I just tell him the answer I don't know whatever so my general recommendation and I'm two books in and we're just starting this third one is that I really like Life of Fred I think it works well for the early elementary years I'll have to see how it continues to work as we progress but I'm really enjoying it and I think it's a good addition to your homeschool library. It could be a standalone curriculum or you could use it to help supplement other learning you're doing. If you've used Life of Fred and you have an opinion, I'd love to hear it in the comments. And if you like this video and would like more homeschooling curriculum reviews, please give it a thumbs up and let me know that in the comments as well. And if you're new here, I'd love to have you subscribe and see what other homeschooling and fun learning videos I have up. Okay, thanks guys. Bye, see you next time. C.C. Colbeck is not a nice man. Instead of hiring three clerks who would each work eight hours, eight plus eight plus eight equals 24, he hired just one clerk, his sister. Why did she look so tired? Because she was supposed to have three. Because she was supposed to have three workers and mm -hmm. she's doing the work of three? Mm -hmm. So how many hours a day does she work? 24 hours. 24 hours. No wonder she's tired. All right, here's the answers. If Kovac's sister is the only one working in a store that never closes, she will get really, 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 really sleepy. Well, you could you could this up when he quits.